Good morning, everybody. We are going to start the first hearing of the 181 period of sessions. Once again, this is an online period of sessions. We hope that in the future we can change uh, the modality, but because of the health emergency, we have to do this. Um, we will continue using this modality for a while. This is a hearing about the situation of human rights of Afro-descendants in farms and plantations in Ecuador and was requested by the office of the Ombudsman. And I would like to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, my name is Antonia Orejola. I'm the president of the commission and I'm also the country reporter for Ecuador. And today with us are Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena de Troitinho, Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, Commissioner Estuardo Rallan will also join the meeting. We also have today with us the special rapporteur for economic, social, cultural, environmental rights, Soledad Garcia Munoz. And also we have the members of the team of the executive secretariat who are monitoring the situation of uh, human rights in El Salvador. And also we have all the members of the special rapporteurship for economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. We would like to greet the representatives of the state for participating in this hearing. And also we would like to welcome the office of the Ombudsman staff and all the members and participants of this hearing. Uh, please, uh, mute yourselves when you are not taking the floor. And please, unless you are having a problem with your internet connectivity, please turn on your cameras. Uh, the hearing will be as follows. First, the uh, applicants will have 20 minutes to present the content of the hearing. After that, the state will make observations and comments for another 20 minutes. And after that, the commission will make some comments and will ask some questions so that the parties can answer those questions. On the screen, you will be able to see a clock. It's not working right now, but the clock will set the time. And when the time is over, I will let you know. I will let you know some seconds before. Um, sometimes it's a, bit, it's a little hard, but please bear in mind time restraints. So first, I would like to give the floor to the uh, persons who requested the hearing. Thank you, Madam President. And with your permission, uh, I will start my presentation. Good morning to all, to the commissioners. Um, I would like to thank this space for the defense of persons whose situation is, uh, is very difficult. They are exploited or they are uh, work in slavery conditions. And we would like to report the following. The Office of the Ombudsman person of Ecuador is a human rights institution. And by respecting the principles of Paris, we comply with our constitutional mandate to protect and to guarantee the human rights of the inhabitants of the territory of Ecuador. And therefore, I would like to give you some context regarding this case. Mr. Ombudsman, you're, you're on mute. Thank you, Madam President, for letting me know. I was explaining that I would like to give you some context uh, regarding this case. On February 18th, 2019, the Office of the Ombudsman of Ecuador prepared a report on the situation of human rights entitled the um, difficult situation of the families of Abaca who work for the Furukawa Plantaciones CA, Ecuador company, because these people who have worked in the farms of the company, Furukawa, were working in 
conditions that could constitute slavery and servitude. Many people from different generations and that were subjected to different uh, conditions of vulnerability because of health conditions and disabilities were working in order to extract the abaca fiber, but without any security or without dignity. Their work relationships and the working conditions with the company were incorrect, but we saw also that their human rights were being violated, especially human dignity. And these violations were evident, and this could be proved. These people were victims of these violations. I would like to quote some of them. The right to a dignified housing, access to basic services, such like drinking water, the right to health, to education, to food, and what's most serious, their right to identity has been violated. It's important to see that the Ecuadorian states understands the working and the life conditions in the camps are well located in the provinces of Santo Domingo de las Achelas and Los Rios and in the province of Las Esmeraldas. This, in these provinces, most of the population are Afro-descendants and Afro-Ecuadorians. And we see that uh, taking into consideration the conventions of the United Nations regarding slavery and the abolition of slavery and slave trafficking and the slavery conditions, we see that uh, people were submitted to servitude and slavery conditions in these camps. I will give the floor to one of the persons who work in this, uh, who worked in one of these camps. And therefore, now I would like to give the floor to the rest of my team for explaining or continuing explaining the context. Good morning. My name is Susania Quinone. I am 61. I'm Afro descendant. I have seven children. I started to work for this company when I was eight together with my parents. My parents were the ones who planted the plantation. But over time, uh, the working conditions worsened. My father left the company and I decided to stay there. I had seven children. And as of 2019, the company wanted to uh, um, make me quit because I was useless, because I was an Afro-descendant and I did not have rights. That's what they told me. They sent the police. They could not uh, expel us. But the third time that they did it, they expelled us finally. And my children were sent to prison. Uh, my partner was shot in his leg. Then he was sent to prison. And after that, we were in the streets. My partner was not able to work to the same farm, but he worked in the Los Achilas farm. And after that, they shot him in the leg, but he died. Uh, two girls were left without their parents. And there was a man who was disguised as a priest. And he told us that he was going to help us because we were in a very critical situation. He was disguised as a priest. He told us that he was going to help us, but he did not help us. He betrayed us, especially the women who worked for him. And he ended up working for the company and he's currently working for the company. His name is Walters, Walter Sanchez Ramos and he has made our lives impossible. He has really affected us. So I, as a mother and as a worker and my owners and my colleagues and the authorities, we have denounced the company. And since then, we have received uh, really, uh, we have been harassed. 
we requested precautionary measures because our security is in danger, especially since when decided to denounce what was happening in the camps. Um, the com I, we hope that the, one of the committees was going to release a report regarding access to justice. We have been waiting for five years for some kind of reparation, but we have not received reparation so far. And the justice is taking too long to investigate modern slavery. So we would like to ask you to help us because it's not two people, it's not 100 people. It's about 1,000 people. We have thousands that are in these conditions. We are really scared about this process because we have received a lot of threats. The company has a lot of power. And in spite of our color of this, our skin, we have rights. This is not fair. Saying that we are um, peasants, that we don't know how to express ourselves, that we don't know what authority is. We have gone to justice. We have the help of our lawyers, but we think that the state should intervene. Thank you. Commissioners, rapporteurs, good morning to all. Article 424 and 425 of the National Constitution of Ecuador establishes the uh, dominance of the constitutions and international treaties for the resolution of conflicts and the defense of human rights. Within this context, it is necessary to say that after hearing the intervention of one of the victims of the human rights violations by the state of Ecuador and by this transnational company, it is necessary to recall that according to the preamble of the American Convention on Human Rights or the San Jose Pact, which was subscribed by the state in order to reaffirm a system of personal freedom and social justice for all persons who inhabit the Ecuadorian territory in order to guarantee the full exercise of their rights. However, and in this case that we have just presented, we would like to let you know that the state of Ecuador has allowed a transnational Japanese company to violate the human rights of a group of people who have been historically discriminated, and that is the Afro-Ecuadorian people. It's necessary to recall that from the times of colonization, Afro-Ecuadorians have been enslaved. We, our rights, were violated. We were considered an object of production. We were not considered human beings. These facts that still occur in 2021 go beyond what is established in Article 6.1 of the American Convention, which guarantees the right to not to be submitted to slavery or servitude. This is a right that is also included in Article 66.29 of the National Constitution. The people who for decades have worked in these farms and in these plantations in Ecuador have done this in really poor working and life conditions. This constitutes servitude, and this is a modern form of slavery. And we are considered servants. It's necessary to recall that for servitude to be considered as such, it is necessary to say the following. A company hires the fields. He hires the people to work there to extract the abaca fiber 
And what I would like to say is that all the family members got to work there, women work there, and they do not receive a remuneration. They wash the clothes of the workers, they cook, but they receive non-remuneration. Also children work there. And it was said or explained by the victim, they work since they are children. She was eight when she started to work. And one of the mechanisms in order to cover up for this is because there is a system. For example, girls are given to all men to pay for the family um, livelihood. What I would like to say that in the green uh, Brazil Green Facenda case, the commission already denounced that the condition of poverty affects and leads to violations of human rights. And this is especially the case of a group that has been historically discriminated. And this highlights the duty of the state to guarantee the full exercise of rights, which is established in Article 1.1 of the American Convention and is ratified in the Article 11.2 of the National Constitution of Ecuador. Therefore, we need to recall that according to the parameters established in the judgment of the Green Brazil Farm against Brazil, discrimination situations should not only be identified, the state should create positive measures in order to revert discrimination situations of groups that have been historically discriminated. The state of Ecuador has not done this it has facilitated the work of the company who is um submitting or subjecting people to really poor working conditions as in the verde farm case against brazil the state of ecuador knows this situation is well aware of this situation and we have people who have lived these conditions for over 60 people, uh, 60 years. And the office of the Ombudsman is well aware of this. They prepare a report in 2018 and they have determined that over 1,244 people are being suffering or are suffering this type of uh, slavery. And also in April 2019, the, this was recognized by the General Assembly or by the Legislative Assembly of El Salvador, of uh, Ecuador, sorry. Um, the state of Ecuador through its different ministries is well aware of the situation. However, by violating Article 54 of the National Constitution, the ministries have not conducted their work and have not exercised their power. And it's important to recall that according to Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that is compliant with Article 11 of the American Convention of Human Rights and Article 11 and 7 of the National Constitution all human beings are born free and equal in dignity. However, in the case of those persons who live, who have worked in the farms of the Furukawa company, we need to say that the state allowed for the development of camps that lack basic services. There are no adequate standards regarding adequate housing. The remuneration of those who have worked in the abaca uh, plantation have no access to education, have no access to health. And that's why the member of the Committee of Defense of the Furukawa workers 
one of his ma her family member family members received um the, his her son-in-law received a shot in his leg and died after that but he did not receive the health care and he had no access to a surgery commissioners article 34 of the national constitution of ecuador establishes that people have a right to social security among other uh, rights for example access to medical care and those who work in furukawa have no access to these benefits in summary it is necessary to say that this uh, inhumane treatment uh, against persons has deprived them of food education and health their salaries are not even above the poverty line it is necessary to recall that as it was stated in the judgment bear the farm against brazil the conditions of extreme poverty and servitude have affected human dignity and we see that there has been a perpetration of a stigmas and discrimination, which were established during the uh, colonization times. Therefore, the office of the Ombudsman requests the state to take the necessary measures in compliance with what is established in the preamble of the American Convention on Human Rights in order to guarantee that those who live and work in the Furukawa farm can live in dignified conditions. This Im implies of people who who can be discriminated against because of their race. It is also important to say that these people are being criminalized. There are two proceedings, criminal proceedings open, so we have to warranty their security. That is why we should express our solidarity and commitment with the victims. We should um, raise uh, precautionary measures uh, for uh, in, according to article 45 of the commission for this effect thank you thank you for uh, respecting the time as well now i'm going to give the floor to the state during 20 minutes thank you madam president of the Inter-American commission of human rights and Rapporteur for Ecuador, Antonio Rajola. It's a pleasure to greet you. And I would like to express my, all the success for these periods of sessions of the IDACHR. I would like to greet the rest of the members of the Mr. Sister Commissioner May Macaulay, Sister Commissioner Arosemena and Commissioner Eduardo Rallon, I don't know if he's already here. Soledad Garcia, the rapporteur and the delegates of the obvious office of the obvious person and other people of the civil society who requested this hearing. I would like to thank for the this meeting and after the dialogue, I would like to get to know the valuable reflections about this topic, which deserves the reflection of the authorities in my country. With these introductory words, I would like to present the Ecuadorian delegation who takes part of this hearing. We have a representation of different departments by 13 national organizations and institutions. I, these are the Ministry of Foreign Relationships, Agricultural, Education, Culture, Environment, uh, the Office of the Ombudsperson, the Institute, Ecuadorian Institute of Social Security, and others. 
I would like to give the floor now to my colleague Ben Toscano, who is the director of the Inter-American System of the Office of the Foreign Affairs, who will have the floor in the first place. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I would like to briefly inform that the, the state institutions have executed several actions to guarantee the protection of human rights of workers of the Furukawa company and all people, not only Afro descendants, but all of them who work in those agricul agricultural plantations in Ecuador. On October 8, uh, 11th, on uh, 2018, in response to some of the protests of the workers, the company called upon the meeting with the Ministry of Education, Ministry of, S of Health, Ministry of Social Security, Ministry of Work, and the Office of the Obvious Person. We also participated in field visits, which were articulated by the Secretariat of Governability, which functions have been uh, assigned now by the government. On 2019, we established vulnerability dates for the attention of the cases and the social record to give economic help for the people affected. We gathered 420 notes on the people of the Rios, and we activated the services of the protection of the territories for the areas of Esmeralda, Santo Domingo, and Los Rios, where the company Furukawa has its facilities. The integral protection systems were uh, went to the field to provide so cycle social assistance to the company to the people involved and we could verify the situation of human rights in the area and the restitution of the following rights the um, Working units had one social assistance, a doctor and risk work personnel. We granted new registration to social security. We wrote down notes about boys, girls in situation of who went to school in all camps. We provided free medical attention. We provided um summer camps for kids and we also provided food baskets and clothing as to the right to identity the civil re registry had 174 cases within we have in a recording of birth certificates renewal of documents and and recording of uh, foreign people as a result of the multiple visits to the furukawa uh, facilities the director of the es the ecuadorian institute filed a complaint against the company in attention to the pr procedural principles the file 2301894392 was uh, notified to the prosecution office number 1 which is now in a pre procedural stage additionally based on the report of human rights verification verification the office of the obvious person and four other notices about violations on human rights by the Furukawa company. The Secretary of the State started to carry it out an investigation to determine the criminal consequences of this re report. This is carried out in a single fiscal um, prosecution unit due to other forms of work exploitation. We do not discard that we can identify the uh, commission of other crimes. This is set for October 18th next year. 
123 workers of the Furukawa company presented the um, protection action against the company and several public entities, as to which on March 4th, 2021, Carlos David Vera Severo, the judge of uh, the violence against women units and Santo Domingo as a constitutional judge, um, decided upon a sentence, a favorable sentence for them. And this was this happened on October 15th this month. We impose a reparation for each of the people affected or the victims identified in the protection action, which is going to be in charge of the Furukawa company. As a reparation, economic reparation, Furukawa will have to reparate the victims with five hectares of land or the equivalent in money. While this is not complied with, the precautionary measures will remain in force, which in, uh, prevent the victims from being evicted. We all, it, it was also imposed public apology, which was complied with again, in spite of the fact that it states that the human rights of the workers were not uh, violated by, this is said by the ministries of education, culture, and social security. As a non-repetition warranty, uh, it is imposed the duty to verify this in the form so that these actions are not repeated. They have to provide psychological and medical attention to the victims and the state institutions are all already active to comply with these sentences. As to the decision of the first instance court to sanction certain responsibilities for, to, for the damage against the nature it was notified to the legal representative of Furukawa so that he presents an action plan according to what is established in Article 505 of the code of the environmental code within 15 days, and it has been re requested for the uh, for the authority in the environmental department to proceed as to the lack of authorization, administrative administration, and the uh, faults which were identified in the technical report. The superintendency of companies declared the intervention of the Furukawa company, and that is why the company cannot carry out any financial transaction or to register any acquisition contract or to um, seize goods that are not uh, approved by the trustee. The trustee states that since December 2019 up to date, the company has not proceeded to sell any of the farms and has taken the measures necessary so that the uh, assets, present or future assets that uh, the press, the, the company Furukawa could dispose of affect the rights of the third parties. The trustee mentions that the company has not evicted the people who keep kept on living in the farms. As to the right to work, the Ministry of Work carried out inspections in the farms of such private company and it interviewed hundreds of workers for the verification of the compliance of work duties, prevention of risk and occupational health and the prevention of child labor, applying all the administrative sanctions that are allowed by the work code, the labor code. Fines were impied, in, in, imposed for $185,000 and other administrative sanctions in, in Los Rios and Esmeralda. $9,000 has been handed 
to the um, miners who have been working in the Furukawa company during the uh, verifications. The ministry cannot close a company, it only imposes suspensions. That is why it notified the company the suspension of uh, work and its closure during six months, and after which the suspension was lifted. The Ministry of Work started contacting the public defend the ombudsman so that it provides legal counsel counseling to the workers of the Furukawa company whose rights had been violated. These cases will be uh, sent to the public attorneys. We started elaborated a sensitization plan for workers focusing on the Ecuadorian population who work on agricultural farms in Ecuador. The situation of sensibilization of um, violations and the opening of different denunciation channels. Up to September 2021, the number of workers of the Furukawa company who were affiliated were 373. As to the right to health, the Ministry of Health provided attention to the residents and workers of the Furukawa company before, during, and after getting to know the judicial actions as to, the, as to it. They, uh, in March, they attended to people within the um, installations of Furukawa to the workers of the company and within the farm of the company as well. 85 medical assessments have been carried out on workers of the company and 1,900 workers were uh, received the COVID vaccine. Up to August 2029, 49 health uh, brigades were sent to the farms, 12 to Santo Domingo and 11 in Canton Santo Valen Bona Valencia. They identified the uh, potential patients of uh, COVID-19. They, they applied PCRs for the identification of the virus. Up to date, 1,600 workers have been uh, immunized with the vaccine. Fortunately, there are no deaths due to COVID in users. The Ministry of Public Health reviewed or analyzed 900 affected people in the podium salute system so as to give preference in the granting of appointments that has been registered in the PRAS system so that the admissions to the um, hospitals and to try to attend to those affected with priority with or without an appointment. We have to manage the reference in the hospital of greater services and to make the appropriate monitoring of the patients. The Ministry of Wealth Being, as it was reported in several reports, have been uh, benefited from the measures granted by the Ecuadorian state and their families were timely monitored and accompanied through an interdisciplinary team and they uh, warranty that they receive health education among others. This is done by the um, Church of Canton Buena Fe and they verified that some families, ex -work, former workers of the Furukawa company keep on living in uh, poor conditions, even though they have greater levels above uh, the poverty. And in Provincia de los Rios and Santo Domingo, there was a committee to identify the actions of the state so as to 
get those populations protected in order to warranty the right to education, which is recognized in our country. The Ministry of, our, of Education has promoted actions in order to locate the families who were uh, working and living in the Furukawa fields. And there was a, an investigation which was carried out and we determined the amount of children and adults who needed education. In order to contact the affected people, there were several interinstitutional meetings, there were several calls and visits to the sectors and the family. However, the former workers were no longer in the fields and some of them said that they were not interested in studying. Those who accepted the education proposal were considered for reinsertion. So 91 children were registered in the education system. However, there were some dropouts after that. 123 workers of the company identified uh people who were uh, considered for uh, the reinsertion of education these are people who belong to the 23 uh, district and five people belong to the 2303 district the furukawa case is still being tried in the national courts ecuador has taken into consideration the recommendation of in, of international institution and it's, it's following the different recommendations of the High Commissioner of the United Nations for the transnational companies and other companies and the special rapporteur for the situation of human rights, the committee of uh, social, economical and uh, environmental rights, the committee on Afro-descendants who manifested their concern for the poor working conditions. The document issues allowed us to, pro to provide the highest human rights standards and they have been placed in the platform without rights, without, with the purpose of articulating concrete actions with the pertinent institutions, carrying out the continuing followers and to report in a transparent way the advances of the following reports. We also would like to get you to know that through the um, report Report issued in on my 20 May 26 after the um, uh, after Guillermo Lasso took office allowed for the competencies to be exerted in a coordinated way so as to guarantee the plurinational state these uh, warranties the non-repetition of the rights and uh, sensibilization process will be coordinated for the departments responsible where these avenues will be analyzed. Final reflection, in order to conclude, I would like to stress that the state ratified this commitment to keep on taking action in order to warranty and protect the rights of the peoples affected. These kinds of spaces allows us to create a dialogue and to coordinate the actions as, and in order to improve the response of the answers to the human rights situation of those people, which is the subject of this hearing. Thank you to the state. I will give the floor now to our colleagues in case they want to make questions or comments. I would like to start with Commissioner Margaret as a rapporteur for Afro-descendant people. Margaret, you have the floor. Um, thank you. Thank you, Madam President. May I? Um, say good morning to everyone, the representatives, um, the ombudsman, and the um, ambassador for Ecuador, um, and, and the representatives of the state of ambassador. And to 
you, yourself, Madam President, and my sister, Khemeshina Esmeralda. And I, I'm not sure if Khemeshina Radon is on now, and, or, and the special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia, and um, all those from the Secretariat um, of the Commission who are here present and others who are online. Um, as the Rapporteur of Afro Descendants' Rights and Against Racism, and also for the rights of women, I am extremely concerned, and I was extremely concerned in, about this matter. And the first question which comes to mind um, for the state is to ask, at what date did the state agree to this transnational company starting business in Ecuador? And what steps were taken to monitor the company's actions from its inception to 20, the report of 2019, because it seems that action was only taken or interest was only paid. I, I, I have to, I'm asking the state to clarify this and indeed the representatives after the workers protested about the conditions of their um, work lives uh, and enslavement. Because from the reading of the uh, document provided for us, it seems clear that the workers were enslaved. And that's, that's, that's really gives one concern that in this day and age, such a situation could have happened and gone on seemingly for a long time. So we will, I would be grateful if the state could provide us with the records they have been acquiring in the investigation of all the victims um, and with full disaggregated data of by with age, ethnic origin, sex, gender identity, or expression, and levels of disability, if any, and, and so on. Um, and also, could you provide us with both um, information on both the, psych the physical and psychological health situation of these peoples? And uh, um, I leave that because I know my sister Esmeralda was stressed on in relation to the children, but all the peoples they affected. And um, I, I, I've listened with interest to that it is clear that the state started acting after this matter seemed to have been forced to its attention by the protests. Um, of the workers, um, but could you send us all the details of these actions and the results that you've um, um, acquired, acquired so far? And also a, a plan, your plan of action for the future, not only to ensure reparation, but also to ensure um, that this does not happen again. And it leads, the, the, the situation leads me to the next um, um, area to ask whether there are any other companies in Ecuador which have not yet been investigated. And could the state inform us whether this the situation with this particular company has led the state to move to monitor other companies within the country to see that no, 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 
the workers of those other companies are being properly treated um, and that they enjoy their rights and live lives of dignity as human beings and not as slaves. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there, Ma Ma Madam President, so that others can speak. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Comisionada Margaret. La Comisionada Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena requested the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the representatives of the state. We see that there is a uh, ample representation. I would like to recognize also the work of the office of the Ombudsman and the whole team of the office. I would like to especially greet uh, the person who testify as a victim of this situation of exploitation and servitude. I would like to send a special message to her. We would like to acknowledge her for her fight. I would like to recognize as well, or to acknowledge as well, how important information provided by the state is. I agree with what Commissioner Margaret said regarding her concern regarding uh, information, uh, that we need detailed information. These spaces allowed us to hear from you, but it's important that we receive detailed information in order to evaluate it and in order to effectively monitor the advances made according to what has been said there is a decision of a judicial authority who has started some or has started to take some measures to respond to this situation. Right now, we need for the state of Ecuador to respond and to comply with its constitution and its legal system. I would like to make two specific comments. First, I know that the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights will mention this, but I think that this is a special case in which our special rapporteurship through its report on human rights and companies. Uh, we can see how important this case could be. So I invite the state and the office of the Ombudsman and its team to consider this report because you will see there all the recommendations that are identified or that are established in the reports so that all parties complied with uh, um, the protection of economic, social, cultural, environmental rights. The second comment that I want to make has to do with the rights of girls, boys, and adolescents. I would like to say that I realize or I have uh, written down uh, that there were measures regarding child labor, but I would like to have disaggregated data all groups have the right or have rights, but girls, boys, and adolescents, because of what our constitutions and treaties establish, we need to guarantee the best interest of the child. And I would like to know whether there is information regarding those complaints or reports regarding sexual exploitation or sexual abuse against girls and adolescents. I don't know if the state or the office of the ombudsman or the victims, if you have information, we would like to have those data. The commission, thanks 
all of you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Esmeralda. Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, colleagues, petitioners, and the representatives and authorities of the state of Ecuador. I wanted to apologize. I had a connection or a connectivity problem, so I was not able to be present at the beginning of the hearing, but I have I was lucky enough to be able to join the um, meeting a little later, and I heard the presentation of the victim and also the presentation of the state. And during your presentations, you were mentioning a precarious and complex situation of violation of human rights for the workers and the families of those who work at the Furukawa company farms. And also the state presented a specific information regarding the measures that have taken since 2019 up to now. I would like to ask you if, as Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay said, I would like to know if there is a plan of action or the stage of that plan of action. And if you are considering in that plan, including affirmative actions to protect Afro-descendants, I would like to know what affirmative actions are you considering for Afro-descendants? And the other thing that caught my eye is the fact that the state said that in spite that the process is um, has been disseminated at a national level. Um, I would like to know the status of that national process, in which stage the process is, because you are still working on it and you're trying to comply with international uh, treaties and recommendations. That is, are my two questions. Thank you, Commissioner Estuardo. Now I would like to give the floor to the special rapporteur. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everybody. I would like to especially greet the representatives of the state, uh, the ambassador, and also the representatives of the Office of the Ombudsman. And also I would like to especially greet and thank the person who testified today. Um, the special rapporteurship is really concerned about this situation uh, because it is related to work or labor rights, also the access to health and access to education. It's really painful to see that there are situations of slavery at this time in history. So I would like to express my concern about the situation of all workers. We have heard or listened to the main complaints and the measures taken by the state. As the commissioners have said before, it would be great to have specific information regarding those 1,420 people who are affected by this situation. Also, in terms of companies and human rights, we know that Ecuador has been leading this area. And we have been supporting your efforts to have a national plan on human rights. Uh, I would like to say that we are at your disposal so that the Inter-American standards adopted by the Commission are included in this situation. And also we would like for you to consider the standards included in the report on poverty and human rights, also in the report on the economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights of our descendants. That is a report that we launched recently. And everything also that has to do with the COVID-19 pandemic. We understand that this situation requires a diagnosis and a comprehensive plan of action. And we would like 
to be at the disposal of the state, of the institutions, and uh, at the, of the office of the ombudsman or to the victims in order to help you to contribute so that this sad situation has a happy ending, if it, that's possible. And we would like to help you to take the necessary measures for this situation not to be repeated again. A mis colegas por todas las preguntas. Thank you, Soledad. Thank you, my colleagues, for all the questions. I don't want to take up much longer. I would like to make a question as to some of the topics posed by Commissioner Margaret and Esmeralda, whether there have been judicial investigations to determine whether there were cases of sexual violence in the case at hand. At hand. So which are those investigations if they are taking place? So I would like to give the floor back to the petitioners during 10 minutes and then the state has 10 more minutes. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. It is undoubtedly necessary to refer to the American Convention of Human Rights, but I will refer to Article 83, number, number one of the Republic of Ecuador, which is the Constitution of Ecuador. It's, we have to say the truth. It caught my eye the arguments posed by the Ecuadorian states. I will say why. They say that five days ago, the sentence was ratified, presented by 123 former workers. However, they forgot to mention that in this sentence, the provincial court manifested that the Ecuadorian state has no responsibility. It stated that the public apologies that were mandated by the instance court had not to be given. So this evidence is that the Ecuadorian state does not take up responsibility through the constitutional stage. It also calls my attention that these compliance measures are mentioned, that the ES responded to 333 affiliates and it says that there were 1,600 people that received the COVID vaccine. How is it possible that the Ecuadorian state represents that these rights are being violated when there is a discrepancy in terms of what is social security, if they immunize 1600 people of Furukawa, what would be pertinent is that the Ecuadorian state through the Ministry of Work, through the Ministry of Social Security, they should warranty that those same one, uh, six, 1600 people should be affiliated to the social security system. They said that in this sentence, there were precautionary measures granted for the non-eviction of the workers, and they represent that when they reached the camp, there are about 100 people, and it's the same state that recognizes that in one in 2019 there were. 1,200 people. So how can we say that there were no evictions if we are saying that there are less than 100 people in the camps, in the field? We have not said, they have not said that these people have been evicted without economic um, resources and they have to look where to live. In Ecuador, it's necessary to uh, pay warranties, some warranties before entering a property. They have salaries that are not uh, even covering the food, the basic food basket. The camps were evicted. How is it that we can say that they are keep on, they keep on living in dignified condition, conditions? 
they state that the Ecuadorian state had made visits and this determined that workers have a better level of uh, quality life. But this implies that up to date, the workers of the Furukawa company who are settled in the 42 camp, which are the ones that are resisting, they have sanitary measures proposed by the Ecumenic Com Commission of Human Rights. There is no drinking water the public transport is not allowed to enter there people have to work one, walk one hour and a half in order to get to their house we should also state that this problem according to us what was posed by the state is trying to regularize this since 2018, which was when the report was issued. However, in 2010, the Committee of Experts of Afro-Descendant Peoples had already stated about uh, this situation and the state has not done anything. What is more, and this was also said by you, the commissioners, the state wanted to justify their actions since 2018, but these activities have been happening for over 60 years. They are saying that people who wanted to get education are receiving education, but what happens with people that during 60 years have been living there and had no opportunity to study? The law, organic law of intercultural uh, education establishes that education is uh, mandatory and this has not done with people above 15 years old. It, we have to take into consideration that in order to have a proper job, we need at least basic education in Ecuador. What is it that led people in Forakawa not to have this education? It's unfortunate that, it, that since they were treated as slaves, they had to go back to the same company, Furukawa, or to similar companies there. Commissioners, the banana companies in Ecuador have exactly the same conditions. We requested multiple times for them to make verifications to which they um, which they omitted. The Ecuadorian state has a responsibility in what is happening, not only with the workers in Furukawa, but with 7% of the Afro-descendant Ecuadorian population, which who were once more segregated and separated from getting access to health education in Ecuador. Madam President, if you allow me as to add what Neritadeo expressed and Paying attention to what was expressed by the Ecuadorian authorities, this leads me to make uh, some conclusions. Madam Commissioners, which is the conclusion? There is a legal um, saying that says when the parties express, there is no need to provide evidence. This means that since 2018 and 2019, all these years, there have been corrective actions in this company in particular. As to this company, we have to remember that it was granted an award by the Ecuadorian state. And this is not only from 2018 to date. We are talking about 50 years during which these workers have lived under explosion. Their lives have been exploited. Where is the health that they're talking about? Where are the sources of work, the affiliation to social securities that they express the 
ministries said that they have already done that, but how, where is the reparation for the last 50 years? Where is the reparation by the Furukawa company to these families? Let's recall that the civil and criminal and labor proceedings still remain. That is why we are here before the commission so that they can hear us defending these workers. It's not one thing about three or four years. It's been happening for over 50 years. And we need to remember that we have an American Convention Against Racism and Racial Discrimination and all the uh, and this was ratified by Ecuador in January 2020. We hope that these legal provisions are applied. It is really worrying what the authorities of the Ecuadorian state have just said, that they are fixing this. But what about the past? What about the children? What about the people who were not even identified? Are they a patriot? that leads us to a profound reflection of everything what has been happening it's not a latent situation the woman who spoke some minutes ago could said everything she had to say and she was really nervous when she was speaking you may have noticed that she lived there since she was a child so she has already have seven children and she lived there since she was eight years old and there were women women who had to hand in their daughters so as to um be um good or be okay with, with a good relationship with the with their employers so I would like to call upon a profound reflections based on the facts and the circumstances, as it was said by the commissioner who spoke in English, which is, this is really concerning. What about the past? What is it that, what happens with the past? I don't know if we would like to make a final allegation. Um, that's all for my part. We're sorry for taking up more time, but we want, we would like to remind you that this is not a case of labor rights. This is a case of integrity and dignified life. These people have not been able to, to build a project of life. And there is where we are speaking about all fundamental rights. We are not only speaking about labor rights or we are not talking about gifts by the states. These people have been here and the state knew about the existence of this company and knew about the problems of this company. Thank you. Thank you the petitioners i granted you more time because i did not want to interrupt uh, i think it were two more minutes i i think it was two minutes and something could you let me know we we have to grant the same amount of time to the state i think it was two minutes and something could you confirm Okay, well, it's two minutes and some extra seconds. We are going to give that extra amount of time to the state so that they can answer to the questions posed by the commissioners and the rapporteur. And I think it's also important after having heard the ombudsman and the team to uh, respond to this topic, which is clearly structural and has been happening for a long time. So it would be good to hear the state 
to have a, a more comprehensive uh, perspective about this situation. I think this situation has been going on for uh, lots of years. It's a structural problem and you should take responsibility as the Ombudsman had said. So I will grant the floor to the state for uh, 10. I think that we are not going to take up so much time because we want to be concise when replying. The state is active in warranting, as uh, the Commissioner Margaret was saying, to warranty the reparation, the non-repetition and the non-discrimination. The Ecuadorian state has activated all the institutionality available to us so as to carry out these actions. And the report that we read within the, re the, um, the deadlines of a thematic hearing, which has to comply with the times and our um, reasonings, we have already presented as the president Rejola requested, we are going to hand in additional detailed information broke down on all the topics that are uh, concerning for you, that it's not only the concern for the affected parties, the ombudsman and the um, commission, but it's also concerning for the state who would like to attend to these issues in an efficient and in a timely manner. We all obviously recognize that this situation is unwanted. So I would like to clarify in the, uh, as to the uh, denounces for sexual violence for children and adolescents. We are informed that we have not received any kind of complaint of that, ki of that kind. And we are surprised that this institution has not made any complaints or has not notified on specific cases. However, the prosecution is investigating. None of these should be remain unpunished. And this has to have the attention that the law imposes. As to an action plan, we detail, we informed in detail all the actions that are being carried out, it's 13 institutions that are actively working on the case since this case was uh, denounced and since it was known by the state. There is a commitment not only to reparate, but also to commit to the non-repetition of these actions. So we promise that in the next few days, we are going to send a detailed report on all the concerns and on all actions that are being carried out by the state. I would like to conclude my intervention, the Ministry of uh, Wellbeing, I would like to add something else. Thank you. I would like to add something that is necessary. Since the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights since 2010 is exerting the defense of the public order. The Ecuador is a state of law, so it's mandated through the laws. Over the uh, decision of people, once the state was articulated through its ministries and as it has already been stated, all the activities carried out by the state, even though that it is already publicly acknowledged, 
I am surprised that the ombudsman is asking in which stage the cases are in. Since this case was uh, received a sentence in the Sala de Santo Domingo Los Angeles, where it is ratified that the company Furukawa S.A. is uh, repairing the rights of the the infringed rights of the workers. So it commits this to Ecuador, but beyond its powers, it has to comply with the law. Thank you. That's all on our side. Can I ask you a question regarding the three institutions that are working on the plan of action? I would like to know which institution is in charge of coordinating the plan of action because there are so many institutions that are involved. And I would like to know if the victims are able to participate in this plan of action. Thank you for asking this question. The Secretary of Human Rights has started or is coordinating the plan of action. Okay. And is there any instance for the victims to be able to participate in the plan of action? Because given the information that we have received from the state after listening to the Ombudsman office and the victims, uh, the plan is implementing actions. Uh, you gave us a very important report, a very detailed report, but maybe it would be good that you have a dialogue with the organizations and with the victims in order to see the advances and to implement the measures with the participation of uh, the civil society organizations. This is something very important. That is something that we would like to promote in this space. I don't know if that has been considered or not, but if you can answer my question, it would be great. But if not, you can answer it that in written. Effectively, the, uh, the office of the Ombudsman was invited from the very beginning since 2018 to participate in this dialogue. The circumstances um, allow for that. But because of circumstances that we don't know, uh, that dialogue has been delayed. But we would like to say that the state is open to dialogue, is trying to establish bonds and channels of communications that are effective so that these situations are not only dealt with, but also that we can create a plan of action. That is our goal. The state is open to this. Thank you for your answer. And as rapporteur uh, for Ecuador, I encourage the representatives of the state and the representatives of the victims to find those instances of dialogues because measures are being taken, but there is some lack of agreement regarding the measures that are being taken. I invite you to uh, have a direct conversation with the representatives of the victims and with the victims. The victims and the representatives of the victims have requested this hearing, but it's important that the state approaches the victims. I think that's important to have a space to talk directly to the organizations. So we encourage you to continue with the drafting of the plan of action, but it, for non-repetition guarantees in the American system calls upon the involvement of the victims and civil society in those measures. That's very important, especially when we talk about structural reparations that affect Afro-descendants. It's important to hear their voices, to see if the reparation measures are actually effective. Apart from the intentions and the great work, the voices of the victims are very important so that reparations are truly effective. And the voices of the victims is fundamental, are fundamental. 
So I encourage the Office of the Ombudsman and the representatives of the state to find those spaces of consensus and to hear directly from the victims. I'm not saying that ha this has not been done in the past, but it's important that we have a formal space so that the implementation of the action plan is successful and effective. Thank you. I would like to thank the representatives, the Office of the Ombudsman. I also would like to thank the victim who explained her situation. And we hope that this hearing is helpful for the advancement of the measures that are being implemented in order to overcome this situation that should not occur in the 21st century. Thank you everybody for all the information and we will continue monitoring. We would like to continue receiving detailed information and the commission is available for anything that you need, everything that has to do with technical assistance and cooperation. And if you need to bring the parties together in order to advance on the action plan that the state mentioned. Good, uh, good morning and have a really nice day. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, ambassadors. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to all. Thank you.